I can sit up here and give you coach speak all day long. I can give you, uh, hey, we're going to win this many games. I can't, that, uh, none of that matters, and you guys don't want to hear it anyway. You've had enough of that shit, so excuse my language. The Detroit Lions shocked a lot of people when they put up their first winning season since 2017. The Lions for the past couple of years were just the laughing stock of the NFC. And a lot of their success has to be given to GM Brad Holmes and head coach Dan Campbell. But first, before we get into the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you are new. I do mainly NFL content, highlights, and then some analysis videos like this. So first and foremost, before we get into what the Lions have done this offseason, let's look at last year and just their stats offensively and defensively and where they should have improved in free agency. Their defense last year ranked in the bottom half in all categories. 25.1 points per game, number 28 overall giving up 392.4 yards a game less dead last in the nfl giving up 6.2 yards per play dead last in the nfl and giving up three touchdowns a game which is 30th in the league they would give up 146.5 rushing yards per game 29th their defense would allow 245.8 passing yards per game which ranked them 30th in the nfl last season so how do they go out and address these needs in free agency? On the first day of free agency, the Lions signed former Pittsburgh Steeler Cameron Sutton to a three-year deal worth up to $33 million. The Lions got themselves a proven quality starter and also a player who's been very healthy. He's appeared in 16 games over the past four seasons. The Lions didn't stop there, adding former 49er Emmanuel Mosley. Throughout his five-year career, Mosley has only played in more than 12 games once. He's coming off of a torn ACL in his left knee and only played in five games in the 2022 season. And then, of course, the splash signing. The Lions made a statement. They went out there and got the best safety on the market, Chauncey Gardner Johnson. The former Saint and Eagle already has prior experience with Dan Campbell and defensive coordinator Aaron Glenn with their time in New Orleans. As for the offense, it was a completely different story. The offense put up 26.6 points per game, putting that number five in the NFL, 380 yards per game, that's fourth, 5.9 yards per play, also fourth, scoring 3.2 touchdowns per game, that was good for number five. Their offensive line did a great job of protecting quarterback Jared Goff, only being sacked 3.92 percentage of times. Now there wasn't many places the offense could get better, but they did lose a key contributor in DJ Chark, their number two wide receiver. So what did they do? Oh, let's go ahead and get Marvin Jones, who already has familiarity with Detroit, whose best season came as a Lion. And they still have a Jamison Williams, who was a first round pick, and we really haven't even seen what he can do. Now let me give some love to general manager Brad Holmes. In the 2021 NFL Draft, he drafted future All-Pro Penny Sewell, who plays with a nasty edge to his game. On day three of that same 2021 NFL draft, he goes out there and gets Amon Ross St. Brown, who has been an absolute stud for the offense, and also got an undrafted free agent gem in Jerry Jacobs, defensive back from Arkansas. And let's go to the 2022 draft, who traded up to go and get Jamison Williams, who wasn't going to be healthy, but knew how much talent that he possessed. Drafted safety Kirby Joseph out of Syracuse, who just absolutely loves picking off Aaron Rodgers. Drafted Malcolm Rodriguez in the sixth round. I mean, and who can forget Aiden Hutchinson just falling to them. Yes, he was the number two pick, but to me, there was no reason why he shouldn't have went number one who had an outstanding rookie season who I only expect will be better. And with the way the season finished last year, there is so much to be excited for if, if you are a Detroit Lions fan. The 8-2 finish, absolutely owning the Packers, sweeping them, knocking them out of the playoffs on primetime television, ending Aaron Rodgers' tenure basically as a Packer with a nice fat L in Lambeau. And you have a bunch of young talent which allows your front office to make these moves since there is available cap and the way they've been able to lose a player and then also get a replacement as well with not that big of a drop off is really impressive going from dj chark to marvin jones and then of course jamal williams to david montgomery they are underrated signings that i think will help them out this season a lot now all of these signings and additions are well and good but you have to hit on the draft we've seen brad holmes do that the past two years so going into the 2023 nfl draft a couple of the key areas where i still think they need to improve would be the defensive line. I know they've re-signed Isaiah Bugs and also have Aline McNeil, but they really couldn't go wrong with adding another piece in those trenches. And then also the offensive line. Obviously they have Sewell and they have Ragnow who both play at it amazingly high levels and re-signed Graham Glasgow, but it can never hurt to have another offensive lineman and then tight end. 
you have the receivers, you have the running backs. Let's get that quarterback a nice favorite target and a tight end, a big body. Since trading away TJ Hawkinson, they've yet to replace him, so they could look at draft night to fill that position. And of course, quarterback Jared Goff, who has been in the Super Bowl, has won multiple playoff games, played in the biggest games he possibly can. He's gonna enter the 2023 season as quarterback one, as he should. He threw for 4,438 yards, 29 touchdowns, and only seven interceptions in 17 starts. Definitely not the worst quarterback to have at all, who can win you games and can take you to the playoffs. But I fully expect the Detroit Lions not only make the playoffs, but win the NFC North. I think they have all the talent in the world. I think these players are believing under Dan Campbell. And it's kind of a process. You know, year one, they didn't know how to win games. Only won a couple. Year two, they knew the formula on how to play a full 60 minutes, win the games, and showed it. Had a few hiccups in the end. But this year, I'm really expecting them to take that next leap and eventually get to the playoffs. And who knows what happens from there. So as always, if you like this content, please let me know. And if you got to this far, drop your predictions for the Lions. I'm really interested in seeing if anybody else is as high as I am. I know media is kind of jumping on the bandwagon now, but I really think they have something special brewing in Detroit. Like the video, subscribe. Peace.